all, with all the therapies that are already approved, I mean, having two therapies approved and hopefully many others coming behind, uh, the management of the patient, I think is gonna be a new landscape of, it's gonna be a new phenotypic expression of the condition because now we have patients that were classified as type one before or by copy number, but today, let's say they're able to sit or walk. So now they're a two, type two or a type three. So I think in terms of, um, management, things shouldn't change in, ter in terms of the standard of care, but what is going to change is what are we looking for? What other complications we're going to start seeing? What other organ involvement we're going to start seeing that we were not seeing before because the patients were not exposed to these type of medications? That's one point. And the second point is what is going to be the best therapy for each patient. I don't think you can generalize right now to say I'm gonna treat all my patients with gene transfer, I'm gonna treat all my patients with nosinerism or Risteplam. Uh, what I have done in my clinic is kind of each patient, you have to tailor the management for each individual patient and to according to their social situation, according to their medical situation, how fragile they are or not. So I think that's gonna give us kind of not a guideline, but kind of like an idea of where to go. It would be very helpful to have clear guidelines, but I don't think we're gonna be able to agree, all of us, into what should be for, you know, which medication should be for which patient. So I think uh, paying very close attention to the patients as a whole, and including the family in the whole discussion, um, it's what is gonna happen now, being exposed to all of these options. I think the most important uh, knowledge that pediatric neurologists need to know, and I will say not only pediatric neurologists, but neurologists, because now these patients are living longer and they are gonna be able to transfer, hopefully, to the adult clinics, is to know the different um, mechanisms of action. I don't think everybody has to know exactly about numbers and percentages, but have an idea of what is the ideal time of treatment, for example. Uh, we know that for all the studies, it's very um, easy to see that if you treat a patient before six weeks of age, that's when you're gonna get the best response out of any of the therapies that are ongoing, approved or during the research. So knowing that, and uh, knowing also to have uh, the discussions with the family where you are gonna set up clear expectations of what are the objectives. For example, uh, when I say this, I'm saying, for example, a patient with type two. Patient with type two, hopefully that patient will walk, but it may not likely. So what are the expectations? The expectations are that we're not gonna lose the trunk control, that we're not gonna lose the strength in the upper extremities, that we're gonna maintain that over the years because the natural history of this condition is to continue deteriorating, the patients will lose functionality and strength. So I think setting up that clearly for according to the type gives you a much better way to manage this type of patients.